Peace, people. Welcome to the latest episode of the Rough Draft. I am your host, Carol Alberto Savio, and in this episode, I'll be talking about my one-time desire to work in the comic book industry. Thank you for tuning in to this latest episode of the Rough Draft. For those of you who've been paying attention since episode one, um, I initially wanted to start my writing career writing in the comic book industry. So I wanted to write and draw my own comic books. So um, actually it was born from uh, when I was in junior high school. That was when I first really wanted to get into the industry. Um, primarily it was influenced by the comic books that I collected at the time. I mean, it was primarily, it was Marvel. Um, the only DC title that I actually really was into at the time was like Batman and Batman and Robin. But um, primarily the genesis for what I wanted to do with the comic book industry was pretty much Marvel. So, um, yeah, there was even a brief amount of time where I actually wanted to have my own comic book company. So um, it was the it was like a whole slate of different characters that I had. Um, like I said, it was primarily patterned after Marvel. So I had a whole bunch of like um, like teams and whatnot. Um, I had a few duos that was more of a, like a my nod to Batman and Robin, but primarily it was teams and individual superheroes. So um, I even had a name for my comic book company because at the time I wanted to call it um, King K Comics. So like I had this whole long slate of different characters that I wanted in different teams. Um, a lot of it was just like, um, like with Marvel, how you had like all the mutants and, and, and the mutant titles. So like I wouldn't call my characters who were born with powers mutants. I would call them Genesis Sapiens. <laughs> so um the other thing about it is like how you have with all the mutants, you had the X titles with the X-Men and all that other and whatnot. So um, I didn't call my team. Obviously, I couldn't call them X-Men because that was already taken. So I would call them um, G-Teams. You know what I'm saying? It's short for Genesis Apiates. So that that was kind of the thing about it for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had a few individual characters and whatnot. So um, I had my take on the Avengers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would have my take on... on um, like groups like Alpha Flight, I would have my take on on groups like Power Pack that Marvel had, and I would do my my own version of them. Um, I even had, especially for me, this was before the formation of Milestone, which is the the main one that everybody knows is supposed to be a diverse comic book company. So, a lot of my characters were based on people that I knew when I was growing up at the time. So, like especially a lot of my friends were Black and Latino, so most of my characters actually were eventually made Black and Latino. I mean. Granted, some of my characters, because of collecting the comics, primarily the comic book characters are all white. So for me, like in the initial stages, yeah, I had a few characters that were white. And then, like, obviously, when consciousness kicked in, I decided to change them, you know, saying from white characters to black characters or, or whatever, or even Latino characters. And so, um, for me, that was very important just for representation because, like, even I would notice back then, it's like we, they, didn't really have a whole bunch of like black actors that I could really relate to or that they even had. So you know what I'm saying? That that was a thing for me as far as like forming my idea for forming my own um comic book company at the time. So it's just like um what else did I have? A certain distinction. Like I said, my mute characters were called Genesis Apiates. And then you had people who didn't have powers like regular civilians, so they were called norms. <laughs> That was my gen that was uh, my designation for those types of people. Um, and then you had those who actually were superpowers but weren't born with them, so they were called augments. You know what I'm saying? So there was always a beef between the Genesis sapiens and the augments and whatnot, who was really the more powerful people and things like that. And, um, obviously my my nod to Iron Man, I had certain certain characters that they had, they wore like armored suits and whatnot, so that's how, how they were able to go out there and do everything and so um um, what else? Like I said, um, my version of Alpha Flight, I had like a, a team called Prime Canadian, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, different knockoff teams that would have been considered like the Avengers. I, I had a team called the Battalion with most of the people were like in, in, in like battle armor and, and whatnot. <laughs> Um, I had another team, Prom American. <laughs> so they were a bunch of superhero power teams that represented the United States. You're saying one guy wore red, another white, another blue. You're saying there was it was two female characters I had, Miss Americana and then Lady Liberty. <laughs> so that was it. That was like a whole team and whatnot. So um 
And with my G titles, I remember specifically there was kind of like my take on the X-Men and New Mutants and, and X-Force and all of them. So it's just like there was a team like my X-Men team was like Mega Force. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't all that great when, when it came to names, but you know what I'm saying? They had like a, a, a youth equivalent called the Power Teens and whatnot. So they were like kind of like my new mutants, and then there was like an ideological shift, and so they kind of broke apart into two different teams. So former members of Mega Force who didn't believe in like the integration and trying to be with normal humans and whatnot, they kind of went their own way. I remember, I mean, they weren't bad guys. You know what I'm saying? They just had an ideological shift, like separatism and whatnot. So. Because especially at that time, it was getting into like the early 90s, I was starting to get more consciousness. <laughs> so um, the characters who were formerly of power teens, um, they became uh, this group called Power Personified. So they were more militant, you know, say they were more separatist in their ideology. They were more political, a lot of stuff that they did. Just like that was something that was up in there. Um, it was a lot of stuff that I, that I tried to do. So it's like it really was a great idea for me. And so it lasted at least from like the time when I wanted to really get into comics, which was like around like the mid 80s, like 86, 87, pretty much up until the time until like I graduated high school. So that was about 92. And the reason why that kind of phased out was really because I started concentrating on film and, film and television. It seemed more, I don't want to say realistic, but it seemed that it would be easier for me to get into that field than to do like comic books. And even though I had all these great ideas and whatnot, and not to mention like at that time, since I graduated in 92 when I was going away to college, um, I had to stop collecting comic books because like all the money I was spending on buying comics, I needed for college, you know what I'm saying? Plus at that time, like comics were starting to get real expensive. They were getting close to like $2 per comic. So it was just like, I just couldn't afford to like invest in them anyway. Like I said, I wanted to put more money towards like my college tuition and like my college needs and whatnot at that time. So, um, I mean, it was, it was, I really loved a lot of those characters. I had a lot of those ideas. Some of them I was, I was even considering changing them into like TV shows or animated cartoon series or something like that. But it, it was, um, I had a lot of great ideas with that comic book, um, dream of mine. I kind of wish I would have pursued it, but you're saying moving on to film and television, like I. I could have brought the, the characters to life. You could have visually been able to see them in action and doing the different types of storylines I wanted to concentrate on. Um, now that I'm an author, the thought has crossed my mind to like convert some of those like comic book ideas and make them like into novels or something like that. I don't know. I, the idea is still up in the air. I'm still deciding on whether I'm going to do something like that or not. But um, yeah, that, that was a great time for me. It was, a, it was, you see, I was able to let my imagination run it was something that I, I, I was really into. And uh, like I said, Marvel and DC were like my big influences back then. So like just all the different team ideas that I had. And yeah, you can tell some of them were blatant knockoffs of like certain Marvel groups. But like you said, I had my own individual storylines. To me, they, they were more, I don't want to say realistic, but they were more identifiable to like me as a, you say, as a young man of color. You know what I'm saying? I think for other people... If I'd have been able to build my company and get the artists and the writers that I needed, I, I really think they could have brought a lot of these, these stories to life and a lot of these characters to life and given them the, the depth that they really deserve. And I don't want to say they'd be able to like rival any of these you know, and combo companies that are out now, like Marvel and DC and Image and all of them. But I mean, I think it would have been able to hold hold its own and King K Comics could have had its own space. It would have had its own niche. But um, you know what? Hey, like I said, now that I'm a novelist, you say I could reach it, you know, saying that same audience just um, in, a, in a different different arena. So, uh, you know what? Thank you very much for tuning into this latest episode of the Rough Draft. Um, if you're interested in any of my other works, you know where to go to get them. Author House, Outskirts Press, Create Space, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble's Books a Million. Um, my books are available in ebook format. So if you want any of my novels in ebook format, you go to Kindle, Nook, Kobo, iTunes, Scribd, and internationally through Tolino and Biblio. Um, all of my books are available in ebook format for libraries. So if you want them for the libraries, you can download them at Overdrive, Hoopla, Baker, Taylor, and Biblioteca. Um, 
you know what? Definitely, if you're watching this on YouTube, you say you know what you gotta do. Like, please comment. I'd love your feedback. Definitely subscribe. Definitely hit the notification button. Um, thank you for watching this particular episode. You know what? Everybody stay safe. As I always say, keep the fist raised. I'm always on my literary grind. And I'll thank you again, and I'll see you in the next episode. All right, people. Talk to you soon. Peace.